We are live. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks a lot, Quincy. How's it going? It's going great. So Kevin is an amazing uh, communicator and teacher. Uh, he is the founder of rtfmanual.io, where he creates amazing analogies for programming concepts. He also has really awesome interactive tutorials that you should check out. I've linked to all those below. Um, but let's talk a little bit about you, man. So uh, Kevin, you started out as an environmental science and entrepreneurship major at U Michigan. And yep. uh, you, you joined a startup and uh, you had to basically learn how to do software development right off the bat. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So I was a liberal arts guy in school. Um, like you said, went out to uh, school out at Michigan. And actually, right out of uh, university, I founded a company called Divergy uh, with a technical partner. And what ended up happening was, you know, we were two 22-year-old guys. He was fortunately a, a computer science major. And what ended up happening was, you know, we dove right into it. And we quickly realized that the backlog was stacking up and my partner's key skill set was back end. And we kind of looked at each other and said, you know, we can wait for a while to get the front end right, or we can find some other way to get around this. And I said, you know, if this is the one thing that, that matters most and that's going to help move us forward, then I'll learn some code. So I jumped in, um, I started with resources like Code Academy, Code School. I don't think there was free code camp at that point, uh, or if there was, I didn't uh, know about it. And, um, you know, just started teaching myself being a CEO during the day and trying to move the business forward and then uh, learning at night. And what would happen was I would, you know, try to do as much as I could between the hours of 7 p.m. and 1 a.m., let's say, I would come back. Uh, you know, having learned a few things, but struggling with a bunch more and, you know, uh, put some stuff in front of my partner and he would help me out. And then eventually I got there, but it was a very much like a trial and error experience and a lot of, you know, it's the same struggles that everyone goes through when they learn to code. Um, but I'd say for me, you know, one of the big things was knowing that the next day I was going to go and look my partner in the face and have to tell him about, you know, what progress I made and like, you know, how I'm going to solve the problems for the business. So that, that's a pretty big motivator when, you know, it's just two people in a room, basically. Wow. So to recap, you, you basically put yourself in a situation where you were forced to rise to the, the challenge. Jumped uh, right in. <laughs> and the well-being of your, your venture was largely contingent on your own ability to, to grok a lot of these concepts and apply them. Yeah. 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 And just the, the cycle of, you know, learn a few front end skills, improve the user interface, do a user test and realize how far I still have to go and then, you know, pick up the next few things. So it was, it was, uh, you know, learning it in real time for sure. So you're now at a, another company, um, but on nights and weekends, you put on your back cape <laughs> and you run rtfmanual.io. Uh, yeah. which is an amazing collection of analogies. Uh, many of your analogy articles, which we published on Free Code Camp's Medium publication, and they've been extremely popular. How did you decide to to go out and, and teach coding? Yeah, so um, I, I started at this new company uh, June of last year, so I've been here about eight months, and I was kind of thinking about you know the challenges I had learning to code, obviously. Uh, on nights and weekends in the first place, and I said, there's an internet full of content out there, and there's sites like Free Code Camp and Code Academy and all that, but it's still a huge struggle. You know, what are all these sites? What are they not covering? Why is this still um, so challenging? And I just thought about what I, you know, I have a marketing background, and I thought about what I could personally offer, and I just tried to take it from a different approach. You know, I was, and maybe you've experienced this as well, Quincy, a lot of resources on the internet try to explain technical terms with other technical terms. And right. it just, you, you end up reading the article like four times over before you may or may not get it. And I said, you know, for a beginner, I just have to, to set that frame of reference. Like, what are people even looking at? And I wanted to avoid, you know, they can always learn the technical terms later but I wanted to find a way to make it really clear. 
And I thought, uh, you know, just a couple creative ways to do that. I didn't want to be just another guy uh, writing content on the internet. And I said, you know, a lot of times analogies help people. So what if I just strictly focused on analogies and put a lot of effort into building great analogies and making that the core focus? And so, you know, like any entrepreneur, what I did to test it was I just, the first article I made was called uh, JavaScript Callbacks Explained Using Minions. And so it's for people that, you know, after you're an experienced developer, callbacks make a lot of sense. But for any newbie, it, it can take you a while to get it. And it's obvious after a while. And I said, all right, let's just put this out there and see what happens. And I got, considering that was my first piece of content that I had ever really posted, it got a pretty strong response, got a bunch of people sharing on you know, Twitter. And I said, I might be onto something here. And then you know, after that, I was able to reach out to yourself, uh, you know, who, who was really nice in letting me post in the Free Code Camp publication and a couple other uh, people in at places like SitePoint and whatnot. And they all loved the concept. And I was like, I guess I'm onto something here. So <laughs> it was really nice to have that validation from people like yourself. But it was started with just, you know, I think this might be interesting, but I'll, you know, try to write one of them and see what happens. Yeah, and since then you've written uh, a wide variety of analogies. Just off the top of my head, I can think of a lot of them. Uh, you explained CSS using uh, an ice cream sundae. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was really popular. Yep. You described uh, model view controller using yep. ordering drinks at a bar. Yep. Um, and and some of these people just write to me and say like. Finally, I get it. Like, <laughs> I've always wondered what the heck the relationship behind between these things was, and now yeah. every time I'm working with it, I envision myself manipulating a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. I, I that's what I'm looking for. Um, I guess the way I thought about it, it's kind of like exactly what you said. Like, people understand these relationships between existing things, like an ice cream Sunday or an ordering a drink at the bar. And I didn't want to try to teach coding as an entirely new system and say, oh yeah, there's these highly technical things and here's what they do, because that's when it gets exhausting. Right. I wanted to say, hey, it just fits into the system that you know, and all you have to do is learn the syntax and uh, stuff like that and, and go from there. And a lot of technical writers, uh, I can say this because I, I read maybe 100 articles a week <laughs> or submit yeah. a Coke Dance Medium publication. And a lot of people like will use they'll, they'll use a lot of jargon, uh, yeah. and they'll point to other articles, and and at some point, my question for them is, why should people read your article instead of just going and reading a Wikipedia entry? Because that's what Wikipedia is. It's basically exactly. a whole bunch of interlinked jargon. Yeah. <laughs> it's tremendously useful. Don't get me wrong, but but it's right. not particularly accessible to a newcomer. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's that's where I felt like. You know the stuff I wanted to do could fit in, and you've also created some interactive tutorials where you can actually go in and basically step by step you can interact with the analogies. This is really cool, and you did all the design mm -hmm. yourself, which is yep. <laughs> really impressive. Like all the assets you see when you go to rtfmanual.io, um, mm -hmm. those assets were created right here by uh, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, the way I figured out if you know that might be worth my time was uh, people would either uh, send me an email or they would comment on the Medium post and say, wow, this is an interesting article, but I'd love it if there's a way that I could participate in it and you know, make it interactive. I said, oh, wow, you know, that's a good next step because that's a more active learning method. It would probably be a little more fun for people to, to do it going along. So I just said, you know, all right, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll find a way to do it. And uh, so what you're describing is essentially um, uh, like lean startup methodology, right? Listen yeah. to yeah. the people who are using your product and making uh, product design decisions based on that feedback. Yeah, exactly. And especially with something that seems this crazy, right? You know, at the beginning, I was like, am I just insane or is this actually going to help people? And the easiest way for me to that quickly validate that was, you know, just putting out one blog. And then what I found was, you know, from reaching out to people like yourself, and uh, a couple of teachers at like General Assembly and First Step Coding, um, they all said, oh, we try to integrate analogies into our lessons, and this is just like brings that to a whole new level. So you know, the experts were already doing it, and I said, oh, then it's, it, it fits in exactly with what they do. So how do you come up with the analogies? Like, are you, you just sit in the bathtub and kind of rock back and forth? And, and, <laughs> how does it happen? Oh, man, there's, there's like, 
there's the different phases and it, and it it goes through my head as well because I'll you know think of a concept like CSS positioning that I want to explain and sometimes it can take a couple days and I'll like creep into the self-doubt phase of oh there's no good way to do this and then inevitably I find something and honestly it you like from the creative process you just have to like get yourself in different situations and pull your brain different ways and I'm trying to think if there's one way that I do it. I, you know, I play soccer, so I'll like play soccer and then think about it on the train ride home. I'll pace around my apartment, but it, it takes a while. Like there, there's definitely a, a creative process. And um, I'd say the biggest thing, you know, you know, like if I decide if, if something's a good enough analogy or not, is I really feel like people have to understand the different pieces of it. Like they have to understand the relationships between different pieces. And these are one dimensional analogies where it's just like, uh, I'll give an example. A lot of people say like variables are like a bucket where you just plop a value in the bucket. And although that's true, that doesn't tell you anything about like the relationship between the entire system. So the one biggest you know parameter I use is can people understand the relationships between the elements in the system? Like an ice cream sundae, people know the cone, the scoops, the cherry. These people understand how those things relate to each other. Right. And and that's the key to a good analogy as opposed to an analogy that just kind of falls flat, like what I would call like a low effort analogy. <laughs> Your science professor said, oh, it's like a bucket. <laughs> there you go. There's your stuff in a bucket. Well, I mean, even <laughs> that, even even the bucket <laughs> level is is more helpful than trying to like explain an a, a, a variable in a very technical way, right? Even a bucket is better than than trying to make it a big technical system, but I'm Absolutely. trying to like do the next that, thing. That agreed. Uh, so, I mean, I applaud their effort, but they need to go to the next level, and hopefully people won't have to reinvent these wheels. Hopefully they'll just use some of your amazing analogies. Love to see yeah. these incorporated into, you know, uh, courses and exactly. uh, university yeah. classes and stuff. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your motivations and aspirations behind creating this project. Because you already have a full-time job. Yeah. You're going home nights and weekends, and you're thinking of these crazy analogies, and you're questioning your sanity while you're thinking of these <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about how how you uh, decided to do this and, and what gets you up and going every day. Yeah, I the way, here's the way I think about it, and you know how I think it might be able to help people most directly is what would happen when I was starting my previous company was I would come home after you know doing business stuff and at like 7 p.m. start trying to learn code, and then by 1 a.m. I need to go to bed it would always be very unclear if I got anywhere on any given night. Because sometimes you run into a roadblock and you just say, oh wow, now I'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow to get my partner to explain this to me because I have no idea. And a lot of people don't have a technical partner you know, that they can sit down with and get an explanation from. And so what I wanted to do was bring in some sort of uh, predictive quality of just saying, you know what, if, I, if I'm working from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., I better get something out of tonight. <laughs> you know, I better learn something. And so I was thinking of if I can set this expectation in someone's head, like callbacks, if they just have an idea where the callbacks thing is going, they're much more likely to like feel good that they're progressing along their coding journey as opposed to just, oh man, I'm running into a roadblock. And I don't know, you know what the next step is or if I'm even thinking about this correctly, but they can say, you know what, if I, if I put in the hours here, I'm gonna get somewhere. So that was kind of the motivation for me and, and you know, at a greater level, it's creating a different uh, a different way to learn. I'm I'm not sure how to put it. Well, but let's talk about the uh, neuroscience behind analogy. Yeah, because like the the human brain is essentially like a relational engine. That's how we store yeah. data is through relationships. It's literally, neurons yeah. connecting with one another. Yeah, and this is something that I learned midway through the process that encouraged me to keep on doing the the weird little analogies is uh, what's it called it's called is associative memory and so your brain it makes it a lot easier to recall information if it's stored in a system and what i felt was like when you know you traditionally teach a new coding topic let's say css positioning you teach it one by one people would say hey this is what position absolute is and this is what relative is and just like go at it one by one and what i wanted to do is quickly get all those relationships into people's brains at once and so it's much easier for them to recall later. And what I realized was that the analogies, that's why people like them so much, is because it already taught them those, uh, those relationships. They didn't have to form them themselves and like magically discover it. They could just say, oh yeah, now I understand you know, how these two things relate. 
Are, do you have any uh, any specific advice for people who are learning to code? Maybe little tricks to leverage that neuroscience to to learn a little bit faster. Um, in terms of little tricks, I mean, using my tutorials is is the best I have right now. Um, I'm trying to, you know, like a better expert on this me than me might be Tim Ferriss or something like that. But um, the biggest thing for me, it's kind of like the difference between memorization and understanding is you can like hack together a user interface, let's say, and like, you know, build it once. But if you want to like feel like you have a grasp of something, you're going to have to understand it eventually. And so I just think that, um, you know, it, it just depends where you want to cross that that bridge. You know, you're going to have to build that understanding, and I think it might be better to do it upfront and really um, try to under, understand the whole system when you can. But otherwise, um, you might set yourself out for a long, like facing one challenge at a time. Right, and having that in extrinsic pressure, putting putting yourself in a situation where people are depending on you to learn effectively <laughs> was that yeah. an effective technique to kind of coerce yourself into learning faster? Yeah, I would say the one biggest thing is just like have a project that you're motivated to move towards and that you want to see happen. Um, and that's for me, you know, it was obviously in my business is that I guess I could wait for a long time for my technical partner to get to that part. Or I could just say, you know, this is the one thing that's holding our business back. I need to learn it. And so for me, you know, just, just putting it right into a project and, and something that I uh, that meant a lot to me. That was everything. Because otherwise, you know, those those seven p.m. to one a.m. nights become really exhausting. And that's the one thing that really pushed me forward was um, focusing on you know that that goal that me and my partner were building. And um, based on your experience uh, teaching yourself, were there any strategies you found? Uh, in addition to applying these analogies, that just really helped you uh, understand and and learn. Yeah, I I really like the active uh, active learning methods. Um, you know, just like doing something like Free Code Camp or Code Academy or any of those, but something that's going to get you immediately involved. And um, I think I like what Free Code Camp does with you know the community of being able to show it to someone and say, hey, we're a community of People that are even if we're accomplishing small projects, we're we're moving along. Um, so I would say that's a big thing. Like, do, do not put yourself in a room and say, "I'm not opening this door until I know code," because <laughs> you, you will uh, that will be a challenge. But uh, I think you know, just finding different reinforcements or things you can feel good about. You know, just just finding successes along the way. Um, that's that's everything. Because in my case, you know, the success might have been getting a, a user interface or a wireframe ready to be tested with users. And of course, it would get thrown right back in my face, right? The users would be like, ah, this isn't good. But I was just proud that I had something that they could use and I could get feedback on and move my project forward. And that's that's huge. You know, After that, I could take that constructive criticism and, and build the next thing. So um, you know, having that kind of intermediate goal is really important. Right on. So just to recapitulate what you said, just having uh, basically having kind of psychological checkpoints you cross and getting feedback and not putting yourself in the proverbial room. Uh, some, there was this great question on, on Quora. Somebody asked, how can I learn to code in one day? And uh, the answer was hilarious. It's like, go directly to the North Pole and prop up your chair in your satellite internet connection. Yeah. You should have three months of day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Find yourself. Find a place for a three month day. <laughs> yeah. So it's important. I, I mean, I'll just, I'll just totally echo what Kevin mm -hmm. said. It's absolutely important that you get involved and you get feedback from people, and that you don't, you know, the, the Chinese have a very important expression that I always like to cite. It's "guanmen zai ku" or "zai che guanmen zai che," which means to close the doors and to build the chariot indoors. Uh -huh. And of course, you never know if your cherry is actually good until you take it out and you drive it. But yeah. you know, this one uh, guy from Chinese lore just spent months and months building this chariot. And of course, the second he took it out to drive it, it just fell apart. Yeah. And, you know, if you're not constantly getting feedback and asking people for input and things like that, you're 
you're kind of building the chariot behind closed doors. Yeah. Uh, what's on the uh, What's on the agenda? What are you, What are your top priorities with RTF Manual right now? Yeah, so I, I definitely want to cover more topics of you know the basics, whether it's from JavaScript, CSS. Um, I've got a SQL article coming up. Um, I've got a Git one, like a, a Git very basics uh, coming up. Um, but I think the greater thing is to just turn those into interactive tutorials and something that someone can participate in. Like I, I just remember all the time struggling when I was learning of not understanding the system and I would do something silly like mix JavaScript and jQuery and my partner would go, those are written differently. You can't just throw those together just because it's all in one JavaScript file. You know, those are they're, they're slightly different. And, um, you know, just helping people along with interactive tutorials, I think, is the next big thing. Um, and, and what I'm looking for is if that can actually help people learn faster. So rather than, um, you know, searching for articles or, you know, trying to do whatever you can to, to find stuff on the Internet, just saying, you know, here's a simple system that'll set the tone for you. And then after that, it'll be a lot easier to learn, like all the little technical nitty gritty, but just to have a level of expectation. So I feel like the, the, the big idea here is, is starting with content, but moving towards uh, an interactive tutorial system that people can participate in and then feel good about the progress that they're making and understand that if they do put in the hours, they'll get there. It isn't just a series of running into walls. Right on. Well, everybody, uh, be sure to check out some of Kevin's articles below. I strongly recommend uh, the CSS positioning with an ice cream sundae. It's one of my favorites. Um, that's a great place to start. And then just dive through as many as, as you're interested in doing. Uh, you'll learn a lot of cool concepts in a lot of very memorable ways that'll, even if you're familiar with the concept, it might help further solidify it. Um, also below, I've got a Twitter account uh, for Kevin. Uh, I strongly recommend you follow him. I follow him. And he also has a mailing list, uh, which I signed up for. And you should sign up for too if you enjoy his work. Um, and check out his interactive tutorials. He's got one on uh, JavaScript that involves minions, like minions from uh, Despicable Me in the Minion movie, <laughs> which we're eager to show my daughter once she, once she uh, is old enough to appreciate <laughs> the banana. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for joining us, Kevin. It's been a pleasure talking to you and learning more about everything you're doing. And thank you for all the great work you're doing in terms yeah. of helping people learn. Yeah, and Quincy, I really uh, appreciate your support from an early stage when a uh, few people knew about what I did and you jumped on board early. So I really appreciate that. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to, to help, uh, help signal boost and help <laughs> more people discover the great work you're doing. So have a beautiful day. Thank you for joining right. us. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah, thanks so much, guys.